Okay, class. So for today's read aloud, I thought I would do The Magic School Bus Gets Planted, a book about photosynthesis. Since we we're talking about um, our plants and we already did our experiment, which I will show you where I put them um, on the window in my house in just a moment. But well, actually, I'll show you when we finish reading the book. But I want to go ahead and read the book to you and maybe we can learn a bit more about photosynthesis and about what plants need because we have been talking about that as well. So like I said, this book is called The Magic School Bus Gets Planted, a book about photosynthesis. And we're gonna read it together. We never know what's going to come up with it when our teacher, Miss Frizzle, is around. Take the other day, for example. Our class was getting ready to put on the play Jack and the Beanstalk. Wanda was playing Jack. Liz, the golden goose, Carlos, the giant, giant, Keisha, Jack's mother, and Tim, the old man at the market. We were all in our costumes and the stage was set. All of a sudden, Wanda turned around and looked at the stage. Where's the beanstalk? She asked. The beanstalk was the most important prop for our play. And it was Phoebe's turn to get the props. But Phoebe was nowhere to be found. Oom, I'm the back end of a cow. Get it? Moo. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Finally, we found Phoebe in the props department. She was trying to put paper leaves on a soggy green paper mache blob, but the blob didn't look anything like a beanstalk. What happened to grow? What happened to growing a real plant? Keisha asked, pointing to the paper mache blob. Phoebe looked upset. I tried, she said. She showed us a tiny pale green plant in a pot. The bean sprouted, but the sprout never grew. I don't know what went wrong. That's a beanstalk? Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle. Oh no, not another fill trip. We can't do this play without a beanstalk, said Wanda. Of course we can't, said Miss Frizzle. And we won't. Just because our prop shop is out of beanstalks doesn't mean we have to give up on our, on our play. To the bus class, the frizz shouted happily. Wonder where they're going to go. Wait a minute, Phoebe announced as we were about to step onto the bus. Since growing the magic beanstalk is my job, if there's any growing to be done, I think I should do it. Miss Frizzle got that funny gleam in her eye. What a marvelous idea, she told Phoebe. You just stay rooted to this spot and we'll have you growing in no time. Was Phoebe about to become our beanstalk? Hit it, Liz. Uh-oh. Liz pulled a switch on the dashboard. Phoebe started shrinking and before we knew it, she had turned into a small green potted plant. Phoebe is our magic beanstalk, said Carlos. Phoebe looked surprised. You mean I'm the bean plant, she asked. I volunteered to help grow a beanstalk, not be one. We all ran off the bus to see Phoebe. At my old school, I never turned into a bean plant. There goes Phoebe into a bean plant. There she is. <laughs> The frizz set Phoebe down next to the sweet potato plant in the garden by the parking lot. Grow tall and prosper. Let this sweet potato plant be your guide, she told Phoebe. We knew that Phoebe had to grow tall if she was going to be the magic beanstalk, but Phoebe didn't know how to grow. After all, she had never been a plant before. Maybe she needs food, Keisha suggested. All living things need food to grow. Well, that's one thing we talked about. She handed Phoebe a cheesy wheezy. I'm hungry, but not for people food, said Phoebe. That's right, we all agreed. You're a plant. You need plant food. So how do I get plant food? Phoebe asked. Let's see. Dorothy Ann was trying to figure it out. Plants don't have mouths to chew or hands to grab food with. I wonder if they eat with their roots, she suggested. But what would they eat? Wanda wondered wanted to know. Maybe they eat dirt, Dorothy Ann said. If you don't grow, I won't be able to climb the magic beanstalk and my entire career will be ruined. Hello? 
I hate to be a, a soil sport, but we've got to find out what plants eat soon. That's all Miss Frizzle had to hear. She whipped out a strange looking two way video camera from her purse and put it next to the sweet potato plant. The camera would allow Phoebe to see and hear us all the time. And it would allow us to see and hear her. To the bus, she said. We climbed back onto the bus and fastened our seat belts. Suddenly, the bus whirled into a yellow tornado. Then it got smaller and drilled itself down into the wet soil. Root a toot toot. Let's shoot to the root. Before we knew it, we were speeding through a dark tunnel. It was amazing. There were rocks and chunks of stuff all around, some that looked as big as boulders. Are those boulders dirt? Ralphie asked. A well-grounded um, deduction, Ralphie, Miss Frizzle answered. Soil is made up of tiny particles of rock and other materials, but because we're so small, they look as big as boulders. And is that water? Tim asked pointing to something that it certainly is. Excuse me, pointing to something that was dripping down into the dirt around us. It certainly is, asked the frizz. What's that, a monster? Not quite, it's a soil mite. This looks like a type of bug that is in the soil. It must be his habitat. Suddenly, we noticed something huge coming towards us. It's a root, said Phoebe over the video monitor. And it's moving because it's growing, said Dorothy Ann. It's growing. That means it must be getting food from somewhere, Wanda said. It seems to be sucking up water, added Ralphie. If we were any smaller, we'd get sucked up too. Is that root eating dirt? No, it isn't. It's drinking water. That tells me that maybe the roots are sucking in water. It's interesting. In a flash, Miss Frizz Miss Frizzle pushed another lever on the bus. Soon we were shrinking again. What's going on? Help! We all yelled. We kept shrinking until we were small enough to fit inside a drop of water. Suddenly it looked like goosebumps were growing behind the root's tip. Then hair started to sprout. Wanda screamed. The roots are exploding. The root is growing root hairs, explained the Frizz. The root hairs started sucking up the water around them. Then they started sucking us up too. We're going to be bush slush. What are we going to do? Quick, Miss Frizzle, do something, Phoebe yelled over the monitor as she watched us. Don't worry, said the Frizz. We're getting to the root of the problem. All of a sudden, we were being pulled with the water through a long, tube-like thing. Phoebe had lost sight of us. Guys, where are you? She shrieked. We're in a root hair, we shouted back. It looks like plants get water from the soil, not food. Keisha told Phoebe on the camera loudspeaker, then, how do plants get their food? I'm hungry. I need to know what plants eat so that I can grow, Phoebe cried. Go with the flow and you know how to grow. Meanwhile, the kids in our school were headed through the garden to the gym. They were coming to see the play. Quick, hide me, Phoebe told Liz. I can't let anyone see me this way. So Liz put a big cardboard box over Phoebe. We didn't know it then, but Phoebe was all alone in the dark. I wonder what that's gonna do to the, her, her, the plant. Hmm. Where are we going? Haven't we been through enough? Suddenly, we were being swept up with the water through the stem. It was incredible. We know the plant doesn't get food from its roots or stems, so the answer got to got answers got to be in the leaves called ralphie as we rushed upward and i think that's where we're headed said wanda meanwhile we could see phoebe on the video mon monitor she was so hungry she was starting to droop hmm. there she is she's drooping top floor leaf announced miss frizzle we got out of the bus and wow was it ever beautiful 
Is this really a leaf, Tim asked. I thought leaves were flat, and this one sure isn't. But it's because we're so tiny, Tim, said Dorothy Ann, that the leaf just looks textured, textured. And look at these different parts. I bet it's the these green, these dark green blobs that make the leaf look so green when we're big, said Carlos. Absolutely, said the frizz. These gorgeous green blobs are called chloroplast, she explained. Are the chloroplast food? Wanda asked. You're getting warmer. There's Miss Frizzle. She's saying chloroplasts sure are a blast. And there are the chloroplast. Very cool. Suddenly, Keisha noticed something at the bottom of the leaf. It was opening and closing, and we could see through it to the outside. We watched it open and close. Maybe food comes in that way, said Keisha, pointing to the holes. Then some air came rushing into the holes. Hey, shouted Wanda. I feel a breeze coming in when those holes open up. Could that be food? Arnold asked, pointing to the air. I don't know, said Ralphie. I'll give it to the old sniff test. Ralphie, be careful. Don't lean over too far or you'll fall in. There's the little holes in the plant. Then there's something coming in. Let's see if we can find out what it is. Ralphie leaned over, over the big airspace. He wanted to smell the breeze as it blew in. No, he decided it doesn't smell like... But Ralphie didn't get to finish the sentence. He had leaned over too far and fell through the big air hole, airspace, and the leaf towards one of the holes at the bottom. Just then, the hole began to open. Help! He yelled as he got closer and closer to one of the holes. Luckily, when the hole opened, a huge wind blew through the hole and sent him flying back up. Boom! Ralphie hit his head. We could feel the air blowing from where we stood on the ledge, too. Thank you for flying Leaf Air Express, where everyone goes first class. So plants stuck in the air through those, open, through those openings in their leaves, said Keisha. And they suck water up through their roots and through their stems, continued Wanda. But what does that have to do with getting food? Asked Wanda and Keisha together. All of a sudden, the sun came out and shone on the leaf where they were. Then the most amazing thing happened. The chloroplast started moving like mad. They were racing to reach the light. Whoa, look at that chloroplast go, said Carlos. What's going on? Arnold asked as we watched the action inside the liquid. Miss Frizzle gave us scuba, scuba gear to wear so we could go inside where the chloroplasts were. We pushed through the wall and headed, f headed for the chloroplast. Wahoo! yelled the Frizz as she grabbed onto a chloroplast and rode it, at, rode it as it headed for the light. Follow me, class. You sure go fast when you ride a chloroplast. Hmm, I wonder why they're going towards the sun. That's interesting. I love how these two characters, Keisha and Wanda, always are asking questions, too. They're curious about something, so they want to find out why. The chloroplasts are sun freaks. They he they're heading for the light, said Wanda. They actually, they're actually soaking sun in, said Tim. And the sun seems to give them energy, uh, Dorothy Ann figured out. Look, said Keisha, pointing to one of the chloroplasts. They're taking in more than sun. They're taking in air and water, too. We could see sunlight shining into the chloroplast. Air was floating in. The chloroplast seemed to be slurping up water, too. All of a sudden, white stuff started gushing in. Yuck! We all watched as white stuff poured out of the chloroplast into the liquid. Maybe it's some kind of recipe, said Keisha. The chloroplasts are taking in sun, air, and water, and they're using it to make stuff, Wanda said, reaching for some white stuff, and it's all gooey and sticky. Then she climbed out and took her scuba dome off. Some of the white stuff splashed on her face. Ew! It got into my mouth, she screamed, but it's really good, she exclaimed. It's sweet. Wanda licked the rest of her face. 
The chloroplast was making some kind of sugar, she said. Who would have thought I'd get a snack here? Maybe this sugar is a kind of food, continued Keisha. Plants don't get their food from somewhere else. They make their own food, she cried. Ah, yes, the sweet taste of discovery, said the frizz as she made a backward somersault to the bus. We called to Phoebe through the video camera microphone. Bus to Phoebe, we figured it out. If you want to eat and grow tall, all you need is air, water, and sun, called Tim. But I can't make my own food, Phoebe moaned. I have air and water, but there's no sun in this box. Box? What are you doing in the box, yelled Keisha. It was no wonder Phoebe was so hungry. Plants need sun to make their own food. So we got back into the bus and went to Phoebe's rescue. Then we must leave immediately. Seatbelts, everyone. So she wasn't grown because she was inside of a dark space. She really needed that sunlight. Meanwhile, all the kids were waiting in the gym to see the show, and they were growing more and more impatient. We blasted out of the leaf with the help of a couple of rockets. Then Miss Frizzle pushed a few buttons on the bus, and we popped back into our regular sizes. We were raced out of the bus and ran to Phoebe's box. But when we lifted it up, Phoebe was gone, and Liz was nowhere to be found. Oh, bad, bad, bad. We want Jack. We want Jack. We found Phoebe on stage in her pot. Liz had brought her to the gym and was trying to prop her leaves up with little twigs. Phoebe still hadn't grown, but Miss Frizzle started, to sh started the show anyway. Once upon a time, the Frizz began, there was a boy named Jack. Open the sunlight, Miss Frizzle told Liz. Through the window of the gym, we could see Liz pushing some controls on the bus. Then the bus turned into a big, huge crane that was as tall as a gym. It started pulling out the sun. Oh, excuse me, pulling open the sunlight. Sunlight poured down into the gym and right onto Phoebe. Phoebe started looking a little stronger and greener right away. As the sun shone in, Phoebe started to feel less scared. She opened the holes in her leaves and took in air. That night, the magic beans, beans sprouted, and the most amazing thing happened, announced Miss Frizzle. But there was still something wrong. Phoebe could feel the water and the air in her leaves, but she couldn't feel the sun. All of a sudden, we noticed why Phoebe couldn't feel the sun. Phoebe's leaves were all curled up. Just open your leaves, Keisha whispered to Phoebe. Have you pulled water out of the soil into your roots? Moo, did you remember you need air? Meanwhile, we were, we were watching what was going on inside Phoebe on the monitor. The chloroplasts inside Phoebe's leaf cells were racing to reach the sunlight. Then we saw the white stuff coming, come gushing out and rushing down through a vein in her stem. Yay! Phoebe was making her own food at last. Then Phoebe started to grow magically fast. The audience was cheering. They couldn't believe their eyes. She grew and grew up towards the roof and out through the sunlight. I did it. I made my own food in my leaves and grew, Phoebe shouted. I'm the best beanstalk I ever could have made. I'm not hungry anymore. Everyone stood up and clapped. Thank you, thank you, Phoebe said. I owe it all to the sun, water, and air. The ingredients plants need to make their own food. Can I be Phoebe again? Phoebe and Miss Frizzle were the pl when the play... <laughs> Excuse me. Can I be Phoebe again? Phoebe asked Miss Frizzle when the play was over. No problem, Phoebe, said the Frizz. The school bus did its thing, and Phoebe was herself again. You were plantastic, said the Frizz. Phoebe was glad, but she was really hungry. She hadn't eaten human food for hours. Arnold gave her a mallow blaster. Miss Frizzle looked at Phoebe and laughed. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Only plants chow down on air, water, and sun, she said, and the rest of us laughed, too. As a human being, I can't make my own food. 
out of water, sun, and air, which is why people invented mallow blasters. How funny. So it looks like Phoebe is now back to a human, but she did it when she was a plant. She needed three really important things, and we've talked about those important things, and those were water, sun, and air. And we also talked about nutrients as well, but plants can make their own food by um, having water, sun, and air. So that's the nutrients that they get. And we learned about chloroplast in this book as well. So that was The Magic School Bus Gets Planted, a book about photosynthesis. But I also wanted to show you guys what our plants look like. So let me turn my thing around. So our beans are up on the window, you can see. You can see that they've just been sitting there for a while and the sun has already started to affect them in a way. I can see some of the water coming um, on the sides of the bags, but we'll talk about that more tomorrow. And that is all I have for today. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.